So to remove the plugs, you're going to have to obviously lift the car and remove the rear wheels. I would suggest removing the underfloor panelling, that rear one there, as well as the wheel arch trim uh, at this position on both sides. Not really necessary on the right, but certainly on the left. It's just going to make it a little bit more easy, a little bit easier because that bank is shifted a little bit further forward. And depending on the cylinder, you need to come in from the, or you're always going to come in from the front to actually remove the or coming from the side to remove the plug itself but to actually get access and put your hands in etc sometimes you're going to put your hands in from the front here sometimes it's actually the center one strangely enough which is the hardest because you've just got this little gap to try and put your hands in especially to get those little torque screws out to get the coils out and also to get the plugs off uh, but you'll just have to work out what works best for you but i would suggest removing that trim to make to give yourself the most room possible so to get the plugs out you'll need an attachment with some sort of universal joint. It's a 5 8 spark plug socket. This length here needs to be about 15 centimeters because that's how deep it's actually going to go down. So let's put it into the second cylinder there. That's how far, can you see that? That's pretty much right uh, at the corner there, which then makes it pretty simple depending on which cylinder to actually get access in here and be able to get everything out. And it's the same on the other side. Uh, even though that bank is shifted a little bit further on the other side, it's actually not so bad. On the other end of it, I would suggest having a really long extension. I actually had two of these on it, so it's well clear of the edge of the car, and that actually makes it pretty simple to put a, um, a breaker bar on it, not risk whacking the side of your car or anything like that. To remove the plug, what you need to do is press on the top up there, in towards the engine okay and then wiggle this thing up it pops off nice and easily but you'll actually have to get two hands in there which if the engine's cold fine but if you're trying to do a compression test and keep things warm it's a bit of a pain in the bum um, to get at the screw here uh, these are actually pretty simple but those that are in the the forward cylinders are a bit hard you'll need some sort of tool with a uh, universal joint to actually get those off their t30 then the coil will just pull straight out. When you are installing that and you are putting it in, uh, wiggle it back and forth. That'll help us actually go into the right spot and seat all the way, as well as you'll be able to then easily line up the, the screw at the, at the back there uh, that holds on the coil. Something to be really careful of, there are a couple of bunch of screws around here. These look exactly the same, look like they're uh, pretty much the same size, but they are to hold on the valve cover. So don't unscrew those, make sure you get these here, um, otherwise that would obviously be a problem. This is bank two on the left hand side. Cylinder four, which is on the far left there, is a little bit difficult to get to, which is why if you actually reach your hands around the front of the exhaust pipe around here, that's where you're gonna get most of the access, even though when you put the spanner in to remove it, you can actually bring it out this way. When you're installing the plugs, if they're new plugs, the number is 32 newton meters. And you'll notice when you talk them down, because you've got that compression washer on the plug itself, it'll feel like it's sort of taking a long time to talk up. But then if you're putting in old plugs, so for example, I've just done a compression test on the car. So I'm putting in the old plugs and they take 25 newton meters. Uh, and you'll feel that it just talks up very, very rapidly, like you would expect a, a normal screw. This is the compression tester that I'm using. It's made by Midivac, which is a US company and it seems to be pretty good quality. I bought it specifically because it had this attachment, which I thought was gonna make it easy to then slot it in that small gap uh, where you actually have to thread it down into the, the plug holes. However, this is actually too short. This is actually about 15 centimeters. So the one up here actually worked perfectly okay. So this one here is the 14 millimeter attachment. You want to use the one that's long because that's not as long as the, the plug itself, but that's going to be nice and secure. When you use these, what you don't want to do is put these in too hard. Now, if you're actually threading this in from the top of an engine, it's actually pretty simple just to grab hold of this and turn it as required. But with the, the engine where you're putting the 
this plug in or these hoses in from the side and your hands are sort of jammed up. Getting a good grip on this is actually a bit difficult. You definitely don't want to be putting them in too tight, which is what they always recommend. But I found getting these out really, really hard. And so what I would recommend is firstly just put a light um, bit of oil on this and sort of go back and forth when you actually put it in there for the first time. Because the first one I did, I honestly didn't think I was going to be able to get it out. I was actually pretty concerned and I'd only lightly put it in there by hand. So you don't actually put it in too tight by hand. When you're actually doing the compression testing, if you hear this sort of squeaking sound, it's probably leaking around the O-ring. So it maybe needs to be a little bit tighter, but the O-ring itself by the action of the O-ring should actually seal it pretty well. What I'm also going to do with this is up here was where I was actually grabbing hold of it. And it was really hard to get any sort of purchase on it to be able to twist it out. So I'm actually going to put a big blob of sealant on the end of this, which is going to dry pretty hard. That'll actually allow me to grab hold of that and turn it relatively easily, or certainly compared to this, to get it out. The fuel pump fuse on the left hand side. The first row of the standard size fuses below those big ones. Fifth from the left 20 amp, that's the fuel pump fuse. That's the one you want to remove as the engine is going. So it drains the fuel of all or the fuel system of all pressure. So then when it starts to try and fire later on, there's going to be no fuel going into the cylinders at all if you're going to do a compression test. So to remove the ignition fuse, just pull back the liner in the boot and there are two rows of these standard size fuses. The bottom row, the fourth one from the left, it's a 15 amp fuse, that's the one that you want to remove.